Wyoming. Lots of land, very few people. The whole point of moving out here is to find a place where you can have your own piece of land and do with it what you want. People out here just want to be left alone. And even when Andy built his own pond for his own family, he did it according to all of Wyoming rules and regulations. So why in a small town out in the middle of nowhere would the EPA show up and harass a man like Andy Johnson? It took seven hours to drive across Wyoming to get to Andy's place, but it was worth it because stories like his, unfortunately, are not all that unusual and they're not being told. So we're here to meet Andy and to tell the story. We arrived on the 4th of July, Independence Day, and Andy was throwing a party. So if we can pull Andy away from his barbecue for just a little while, he built that thing, by the way, real proud of it. We can sit down with him in his living room and have a little conversation about Andy and the EPA. How long, we'll start with this, how long have you lived in this town? 10 years. Have you born and raised in Wyoming? Yes. So uh, how long at this particular house? Mm, right at 10 years. Right at 10 years. Mm -hmm. so, and the pond has been here for how long? Three years. All right. Before you went to build the pond, you went to uh, where to find all the proper permitting and I mean, how do you, how do you do that? I wouldn't even know. Where do you begin to find well, the permitting to build something like this? Yeah, I didn't know either. So I called the uh, state uh, engineer's office. The local guys came out, they surveyed it, they told me what I needed and we started filling out the permit and they sent it into Cheyenne for approval. It came back, got approved and then we went to, went to build. Okay, now you were telling me you took special precautions like, for example, when you built the spillway, you have something at the bottom to prevent what from going over? Well, we have an 80-foot drain pipe. Okay. So when we were building it, we laid the drain pipe in the existing channel so the water went through the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then we built it up, compacting it the whole time, and then we rip-wrapped the whole face of it. Well, we designed the spillway to where the water comes up to a certain level and then it automatically dumps over. We don't regulate it in any way. We don't pump out of this water. As you can see, it's crystal clear. It's beautiful water. It's actually 41 times cleaner. Well, well, yeah. Any natural sediment that comes down is going to settle to the bottom of the pond. And then the cleanest water is going to go over the spillway and continue on down. And eventually my pond will fill up and I'll have to clean it out. Okay. Now when you, when you clean that out, where does that stuff go? I got to put that away. I got to take okay. that out and take it away on the okay. upstream side. So in effect, you've actually made something that is cleaning the water as it's heading downstream. Yeah, I, I've installed a huge filter. Uh, fish showed up naturally? Yeah, there was some fish in there um, and they just grew and grew and grew ever since we put it in. They started out to be about six inches yeah. and now they're two, three pounds. Right. Biggest thing you've caught? Um, I caught a brown in there that was, he was about three and a half pounds. He was yeah. a big, nice brown. All right, uh, how did the EPA contact you? They first sent me a letter um, stating that I may be in violation. And then um, we, I, think, I think we got a phone call and then we got a visit right here at the house. Okay, a letter saying you may, then what did the phone call say? Um, he asked if he could come out here and look. Hmm. And you know, we're the type of people that we said, sure, come out, I'll work with you, we'll work together and we'll, um, you know, if there's a problem, we'll fix it. Okay, so at no time did the EPA say that there's a problem, we're going to show you how you can fix the problem? So you're no. in compliance, not involved? No, absolutely not one time. They just, they kept asking and asking and asking for information, and then they just turn around and use it against you. Did anybody at any time from the EPA or any other government agency come down here and test the water in your pond? No. Or see if you're in violation of anything? No. No, not yeah. any one time. No. Uh, Governor Meade has called you, you said, twice yeah. now? Yeah, he called our house a couple times now. He said that he is absolutely behind us 100%. They permitted the project. Wyoming stands behind me, and he says he will uh, offer any assistance that we need. Okay, and uh, has that come to anything legal yet, or are they just still sending threatening letters? Um, right now, it's a, it's a big waiting game. Um, we're just waiting to hear a response back. We submitted a bunch of information about a month and a half ago, and so we're just, we're just waiting. Okay, what has this cost you so far? Uh, a lot more than it should have. Right. Just, an, just some nasty letters and the phone call Yeah, have cost you some overtime at work and... Oh, oh lots of overtime. It's yeah. cost me um, sleepless nights. It's cost me 
you know, it's harassed me, my wife, and my kids. It's threatened my livelihood. Um, it, it's threatened our way of life, and and I've taken it very personal. Okay. Why'd you build the pond in the first place? What was the point of the pond? Well, you know, it was our dream to own some acres out out in the middle of nowhere in the country, and so we bought this lot. And that little bit of water that was coming down, I told my wife the very first day that we saw this property, I said, "How cool would that be to make a nice little pond right there, so we can have our horses drink out of it, our kids can fish in it." Ducks, can, ducks and geese can come down and, and be in it. And, and I just I just wanted to improve my property. The, you were telling me it's at the perfect angle too. Oh yeah, the so. guy from the state, he came out and he said, this is one of the best spots I've ever seen to create a pond. Someone from the state said that. Did he yeah. work for the state? Yeah, he was a state engineer. Okay, so yeah. a Wyoming state engineer came down here just to what, make sure you were doing it right or give advice? Was well, he was actually part of the um, the permitting process. They, um, they surveyed it three or four times and he came down we talked extensively about this project and how to do it and what the best design was and and so he loved it he absolutely mm -hmm. loved it and and this took years i mean this this wasn't like a two-week process this took years to acquire five years before we got this permit back from the state after the pond was finally finished did anyone come down and take a look at the pond to say whether you had done it properly or not yes the state engineer came down mm -hmm. i called him up said we were done so he came down he looked it over and he said, I cannot believe you did a fantastic job. You went above and beyond anything you had to do. And he said, I'm gonna fi file all the, the final paperwork, send it in. So about um, six months later, we got a paper from the state saying that we are in good standing with the state of Wyoming and that our pond is exactly permitted, exactly exercised as permitted, is how it was worded. Uh, anyone since then come back from the state of Wyoming or just the calls from the governor? Um, that's pretty much been it. We've had a lot of support from the senators. Right. Um, they've been involved with a lot of the, the letters and everything, the press and, and the media. Any other legal support? Because I know there's a lot of different groups out there, legal groups that usually take on cases like this. Yeah, um, we've been contacted by Mountain States Legal Foundation. They have a, a, a pretty good interest in it. And then we've also been contacted by uh, Pacific Legal out of Portland, Oregon. Okay. So they, they both want to take this case on if, if it goes to court. Okay. Well, good. You'll have plenty of support there. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of the things that have shown up at your pond, because I know we've talked about the fish that have shown up, but you once told me about all sorts of other wildlife that's oh, come yeah. to the pond. Oh, absolutely. We have moose come walking through here. We have mink, uh, muskrat, ducks and geese, bald eagles, um, blue herons. Um, you, you name it, it's here. I mean, it, it just thrives down there. Every night we watch a blue heron come in and fish. We see bald eagles land on our power lines down there. I've seen a bald eagle swoop down and grab a trout and then come up here on this hill and eat it. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. So we, we've got beavers, we've got um, about well, the What if the beaver just stopped and built a dam? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, they could have done it in the exact same spot if you think about it, where, that, where, where your bridge is right now. It would have been easy for them to do. Yeah, yeah. I. I don't know. I, I don't know if that would have been okay or not. So after the interview out by the pond, I was offered a paddle boat ride. Yeah, my sick guy's the guy that's helping Andy out yeah. with the violation and stuff. Oh, is he? Your stepdad's doing that? He's a consultant. Okay. Wetlands. What? Oh, wetlands. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. But he said there's no violation, so. And the state of Wyoming says there's no violation, so. These things need like a bigger paddle, you know. Yeah, they need like. So she said her stepdad was helping Andy Johnson. That's him right over there with the fishing pole. So he saw me and came up and joined me on the bridge. When we investigated here and did our assessment, uh, my wife, uh, Susan, who's also my business partner, we noted that, number one, uh, stock watering ponds are exempt uh, under Section 323.4 of the Clean Water Act. And this stock watering pond uh, actually received a permit from the state of Wyoming for the purpose, the written purpose, of and identified as a stock watering pond, so he got his permit. So therefore, you have state uh, verification, not just his own word, that this is a stock watering pond, and it is exempt. Uh, secondly, uh, we don't think there's any jurisdiction here because in order to have jurisdiction, there has to be a significant nexus, either for a wetland or a water body. Uh, and the significant nexus means that there must be a traditional, traditionally navigable water. Well, there's the word I was looking for because 
if you can't navigate this thing, then the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction over it. I thought it ended there. Well, what they, what they want to see is there can be a surface hydrologic connection. And if there's a surface hydrologic connection to, in this case, my understanding is the nearest navigable water yeah. identified by the government is the Green River, which by water course is something like 100 miles away. So to have a significant nexus, what that means, what the Supreme Court ruled, was that in the Rapanos case, uh, Justice Kennedy said that in order to have jurisdiction, there must be a significant nexus. And what that means is that significant nexus or relationship means that if you put a discharge of a pollutant, in this case, like uh, or gravel or dirt or rocks, according to the government, that's a pollutant. If you put it in a waterway or a wetland, it must have a significant effect, not just in effect, but a significant impact or effect upon all three things. It has to have biological, chemical, and physical integrity of the nearest uh, navigable water. So what the Corps is saying, or the EPA in this case, building this pond would have a significant effect on the biological, chemical, and physical integrity of the Green River, which is ludicrous because by building this pond, putting a little dirt and gravel in here uh, in order to do the spillway could have no measure. It would be impossible to have a significant effect on the Green River 100 miles away. It's just ludicrous. So in that case, uh, we don't have jurisdiction. And another one is this water body runs into, it doesn't run into the Black Fork River. It runs into an irrigation canal, a man-made irrigation <laughs> canal. So, so there you lose jurisdiction again. And the last thing is even if this was not exempt, which it is, even if it was a jurisdictional water, which it is not, the last thing is there's a nationwide permit, which is a general permit, one that you don't even have to apply for. It's an automatic permit. There's some 50 of them, 50, 52, depending which state you're in. But these general permits, one is for nationwide permit number 18, which allows you to discharge up to 10 cubic yards of fill material. And we measured here, it's about eight and a half. Uh, below the high water mark, the ordinary high water mark of a stream. And if you do that, if you keep it less than 10 cubic yards, and if it's not in a wetland, which this is not in a wetland, and you don't exceed 10 cubic yards, you're automatically authorized and you need no, even an application to fill out. So the EPA is just making up the rules as they go Absolutely. on. Absolutely. I mean, we can't see, even if I had my old hat on that said Corps of Engineers Enforcement Officer, uh, uh, Regulatory Project Manager with the Corps of Engineers, and I came out here to look for a violation, I could not find one, mm -hmm. even if I was wearing my old Corps of Engineers uniform and I was still working for the government. Mm -hmm. There is no violation. We've, we've seen this all over the country. We have clients in Alaska, in New York State, in Maryland, Mississippi, uh, Iowa, where we have seen these alleged violations and they're unfounded. And even, even, we've, even had, we've even had criminal cases where I've testified at criminal trials where our clients have been found not guilty. And the EPA would say, okay, well, You've been found not guilty of filling any wetlands because the jury said there were no wetlands. And the EPA would say, you know what? We still think they're wetlands. We don't care what the jury said. Now, but, the, but we have the authority to pursue you in a civil case now. And so then they go after a client civilly, say, well, we can't put you in jail anymore for a criminal violation. You've been found not guilty. However, now we're going to go after you civilly. And we're going to start with the penalties and the fines. I've uh, had the theory that these people at the EPA are just environmentalists that couldn't get anything done by protesting so they joined the bureaucracy and then congress gave them the ability to write law by the giving them the ability to write the rules and regulations to make something happen like the clean water act so now we have am i wrong are we now we have in effect environmentalists in government writing law from an office and Act, not going through the legislature actually you are absolutely correct when, when i when i uh, applied for and got a job with the Army Corps of Engineers. I'd recently earned a master's degree in wildlife ecology, wildlife and fisheries ecology. So by training and education, I'm a wildlife biologist. And I was amazed to see when I started my career with the Corps of Engineers, 
that, that my colleagues, both in the Corps and the EPA and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, more than conservationists, they were preservationists. In other words, tree huggers. Mm. And, and these tree huggers, they get in there, like you're saying, and then they help uh, 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 orchestrate, if you will, uh, some of these environmental laws and regulations. And even if they don't, they're in charge of enforcing things. And that's where this overreach comes from. So what's the real reason that a man like Andy Johnson is harassed by the EPA? If his pond is in perfectly good condition, what's the real reason? Well, perhaps this employee of the EPA can explain it. Um, I guess your second question, in terms of manpower, you're right. I, I am limited in terms of the number of enforcement staff I've got. I've got about 150 people that do enforcement. I've got five states. I was in a meeting once and I gave an analogy to my staff about my philosophy of enforcement, and I think it was probably a little crude and maybe not appropriate for the meeting, but I'll go ahead and tell you what I said. It was kind of like how the Romans used to you know, conquer the villages in the Mediterranean. They'd go into a little Turkish town somewhere, they'd find the first five guys they saw, and they'd crucify them. And then, you know, that town was really easy to manage for the next few years. And so, you make these temples out of people who were, in this case, not complying with the law. So you find people who are not complying with the law, so apparently when you can't find somebody out of compliance, then you just pick one person and make an example out of them, like Andy. See, the way it's supposed to work in America is we are free people in a free country and government's job is to protect us. And the EPA's job, if they find a violation, to help show us what's wrong and get us in compliance so we make sure that our environment is in fact clean. But what do you do with a government that's out of control? They're not protecting us. They're not helping us. In fact, they spend all of their time harassing us. What do you do then? Well, the more we give in, the more power they take. So the answer must be then to fight back. And in order to fight back, that's gonna take everybody, your friends, your family, your elected officials, the local media, even if you have to drag them kicking and screaming into the conversation. You know how reporters hate to cover real news stories these days. Oh, by the way, this aerial shot of Andy's property, he drove us up there to take a look at it. Go for it. <laughs> and he drove us down. <laughs> and of course, you can't celebrate the 4th of July in Wyoming without blowing stuff up. Part of the reason that we come out and gather around is not just because it's the 4th of July, but because we found a situation right here and right now where someone who was just leading his life and minding his own business suddenly found that he was being harassed by government. And when we good people find that one of our own is being harassed by government in this way, our job is to gather around him and offer our support and help him in the fight. And of course, as if all that wasn't enough, the perfect end to a perfect day, Andy let me light the fuse on his homemade black powder cannon. Actually, I was sitting here thinking, you know, I'd love to light that with the cigar. There we go. With my cigar. Yes. Wow. Multiple times. Yeah! <laughs> Holy crap! That was awesome!